What is going on guys? Grave here today. I'd like to talk about some of the best settings you can use for console here in 2021. I did a video about this a while back. There's been a lot of things added to the game since then, so I want to do an updated video about that. I know a lot of you out there really enjoyed the console settings, so let's go ahead and hop right into it. This is going to be a longer video than normal because there's a lot of things here to go over. First of all, we're going to look at video. Uh, this a lot of this stuff now taken into consideration, you can kind of mess around with it and set it how you like it, but this is works. What's kind of works best for me. I have mine set up brightness wise a little past half. I do play on a monitor, but also I like to have the brightness kind of a little bit brighter for when I'm recording videos, uh, because whenever I render, it does make the video a little bit darker. So that's just kind of personal preference. When it comes to the, the adjusting of the screen, I have this shrunk down as small as it will go. That way it makes the HUD really small, really tight. Nothing kind of bleeds off the screen. When it comes to the uh, custom scale, I have that set to own. I have this about two ticks down from the end. If you go all the way to the right, which I think is what is owned by default, it's a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller, and you kind of can see it's going to shrink it down further and further. Now, this is going to shrink everything on your screen, uh, all your options, all your menus here, your uh, abilities, your chat bar, all that kind of stuff. So I like to have it a little bit bigger but not as big as it's going to get. So about two down from the end. And of course, screenshot mode. If you guys did not know, if you ever want to take a screenshot, this is how you do it. It will actually make it so you can take a shot, you know, with nothing really in the picture if you prefer to. Uh, when it comes to audio, uh, I prefer to have the subtitles off. Master volume is about halfway down. Music volume is off. I will say the music, uh, the kind of combat fighting sounds that are going on in Blackwood, the music is really, really good. So you might want to turn that on to listen to it. But everything else here is what kind of default you know what is whatever set by default in the game um when it comes to gameplay i use template a but i do have a playstation back button so i'm able to assign that left weapon swap you know on the d-pad to one of my back buttons uh, that is one thing that i really don't like about their options here there's not anything really that makes weapon swapping easy on console so a lot of people use a back button. A lot of people on Xbox or PlayStation use scuff controllers, battle beavers, whatever the case may be. You can go into your settings on PlayStation at least. I'm sure there's probably an option like this on Xbox as well. And map your buttons to whatever you want them to be on console. A lot of people map that weapon swap button to R3. That way, weapon swap will be on your right trigger or on your right thumbstick. That way your hands will never be off uh, You know your thumbstick and you will also be able to swap weapons at the same time. So if you'd like to do that, that is a pretty easy way to kind of combat that annoying weapon swap being on the directional pad. I turn the vibration off. Everything here uh, is personal preference in this section here, in the general section. So kind of if you want to have your thing showing on your mount, you can. Uh, when it comes to combat cues, I have these set to own. Custom colors set to own. Friendly colors uh, to green are kind of a mint green and turned down all the way. So whenever a friendly ability is out, it's going to look like that. Enemy color is pink turned all the way up and so whenever an enemy puts out an ability it's going to be like that that way you really know to get out of that area and pink stands out very well in my opinion uh prevent attacking innocent zone quick cast ground abilities is on kind of show you why i do it this way uh, if i want to put my ability out over there you just tap the button once and your ability is going to go to wherever you want it if you have this set to auto which i know a lot of people use i don't like this because not only do you have to tap the button twice of course you kind of say you can move it around wherever you would like but of course you have to hit the button once and then hit it again to use the ability. I prefer just to be able to tap it one time and that's all you have to do. It does take a bit of getting used to considering you can either go past or kind of put the ability in front of the enemy. So just keep that in mind. But once you get used to uh, having this own, it works a lot better. I do not have the companion ultimate yet. I still have this set to own, but you're going to have the option where either the companion can summon the ultimate whenever they want, or you can decide you can use it whenever you would like. Probably best to have this off in the end, especially if you're using something like a, a healing companion that way. If they have a healing ultimate or whatever the case may be, you can use it whenever you need it. Uh, consolidate area loot zone, auto loot zone, auto loot stolen items is off. Prevent stealing placed items is on. The main reason is because whenever I'm doing my dailies and I go turn all my daily crafting writs in, sometimes there's things around that you can steal. And I have a lot of characters I do daily crafting on, so I'm trying to hurry up and go through and you know click on the boxes really quick. And sometimes I will steal an item, so I'll just have that turned to own, so that way I don't steal something by accident and, of course, have to pay the guards for it. Uh, auto add to craft bag own. If you have ESO Plus, I highly recommend that. And everything else here is by, kind of just set to whatever default was. When it comes to camera, I have the uh, assassination camera on. The screen shake turned all the way down. I absolutely cannot stand the screen shake. Camera sensitivity turned all the way up. 
That way I can look left and right really, really quickly. Uh, really handy for PvP, definitely, uh, if you're a PvP fan, but it's just handy for everything, in my opinion. The camera sensitivity is very, very slow in this game, so turned all the way up is very easy to get used to. I don't really recommend playing in first person, but if you're going to, make sure you have that turned all the way up so your first person FOV is wider. Uh, you want to have the head bob turned off. Third person FOV, all the way up, horizontal position, all the way to the right, horizontal offset pretty much here in the middle. So when you have this set up, you're going to have a wide view like I do here. Now, some people kind of ask how I get this wide view even though I have those settings set. If yours is not this wide, if you hold down on your uh, D-pad and push up on the thumbstick, you will go into first person. Of course, that is on the right thumbstick. And if you pull right or kind of back on the right thumbstick holding down on the D-pad, it will zoom all the way out. And that is where I always leave mine set. That way your uh, cursor is kind of straight over your head. Uh, you have a good wide FOV. You can look up or down, you know, kind of however you're needing to see what's going on. A lot of times if I'm in a dungeon or a trial, I'll fight kind of looking over the top of it a little bit more so I can throw my abilities out very easily, kind of like so. Uh, some other things here, of course, in the interface is going to be however you want to have the display name here. I prefer to have the online ID. If you don't have the online ID, you're going to see a lot of characters' names, and you may not know every person's character name, so I'll just leave it to online ID. Uh, pretty much everything here is set to uh, whatever the default is. I did change the fade rate of the chat up. That way it leaves the chat box up a little bit longer. Uh, when it comes to nameplates, this one's a lot of info here. So I'm gonna try to go to, gotta try to go through them, excuse me, quickly as possible, but also make sure you guys can see all these. You may need to pause it kind of through this in case you need to check exactly what I have. I have my nameplates on, show title is on, show guild, uh, tabard if you have it equipped as off. Um, yourself show never the reason i have this tabard off real quick um i like to have the tabard you know on mainly for the guild name under my name the bad thing is is if you have the tabard on it's always going to cover up your you know whatever you're wearing your gear your outfit i wish there was an option to hide that and just be able to see the guild name under your head. But that's just kind of personal preference. I'm really not a big fan of having those on all the time. Even the one that I have, I like that I have made for my guild. I'm just not a big fan of it. Uh, just the look of it from covering up your armor. Uh, group members, I have uh, always on. Uh, group members highlighted always. Friendly NPCs targeted. Friendly NPCs highlighted targeted. Friendly players show always. Friendly players highlighted targeted. Neutral NPCs targeted. Neutral NPCs highlighted targeted. If you turn these on to always, you're going to see tons of NPC names over their head. So I prefer just to, whenever I'm looking at them, I can see their name then. Uh, enemy NPCs, you want to have this on always because you're always going to want to be able to see enemy NPCs no matter if they're close or at far away, a far away range. That's another good reason of having that wide FOV. You can always see those enemy uh, NPCs. Enemy NPCs highlighted, I have that set to targeted. Enemy uh, players, I have that to always. Enemy players highlighted, I have that to targeted. When it gets down here to health bars, I have this on. I have it set to center. Uh, damage taken indicator on. Frame border on. Anything for self, I always turn to never or disable it. Group members to always. Group members highlighted to always. Friendly NPCs targeted. Friendly NPCs highlight, highlighted targeted. Friendly players show targeted. Friendly players highlighted injured or targeted. Uh, neutral NPCs targeted. Neutral NPCs highlighted targeted. Uh, enemy NPCs showed targeted. Enemy NPCs highlighted, injured, uh, injured or targeted. Uh, enemy players show uh, shown uh, injured. Uh, enemy players highlighted, injured or targeted. Alliance indicator, I have that for enemy. Group members off. Uh, if you want to resurrect a player, of course, I have that to own. Uh, followers on. The glow thickness, that's just the thickness of the target uh, kind of way it glows. You want to have that turned all the way up. Target glow set to own. Intensity all the way up. Uh, and then, of course, glow intensity all the way up. I know it's a lot of info right there, but this these settings are some of the best in the game that I have found. That way, everything looks good out there on the game. You can see people's names. You can see NPCs. You can see enemies. But the reason I set some of these, like I said, to targeted is because you don't want everything to have a name over it all the time. Sometimes you might just want to see a name when you're looking at it. So that's why I do it for the NPCs. Um, some, some of these settings now will kind of let you know when you change some of these, you may need to go back in to your social and change your text size. For some reason, when you change those settings, it changes your text size. I run my text size to small, HUD chat display to own, profanity filter to off, that's of course just up to you. My leaderboard notifications off, auto decline duels on. Uh, the main thing here, of course, you know, you can change all your chat colors for your zone, 
uh, guilds, all that stuff. Of course, that's all up to you, kind of personal preference. When it comes to combat, this is probably some of the most important things in the game. And one of these things that were added in in Blackwood yesterday makes the game so much easier. I have my ability bar uh, to always show and ability bar timers. This is something that was added with Blackwood to own and ability bar, uh, your ability bar back row to own. Now, before most of you know, we only had the option to see timers on some abilities. So, for example, we never could see a timer on Wall of Elements. Now that Blackwood has come out, we have this pretty much what... Uh, was added in from you know PC kind of what they have action duration reminders what it's called on PC if you hit any ability you're going to see a timer on it if you bar swap you're going to see where that ability was you kind of see right there on triangle above my uh, mage's wrath that that is still counting down so you can see that bar counting down now I know it's over I can go back cast it again that's going to work for any ability so let's just throw everything out here you can kind of see when I swap bars that all those timers are still counting down. So if I do this and you throw something on this side, which I really don't have anything to throw any, an enemy or an enemy to throw anything at, you can kind of see once again, all those bars are counting down. This is going to make learning a rotation a lot easier. If you're on a static rotation, this is going to make learning a dynamic rotation a lot easier. It's going to definitely improve everybody's DPS. So make sure you have uh, all those on own. So you can see your timers all the time on your front bar and back bar, no matter what side you're on. Ability bars always show resource numbers, number and percent. Active combat tips, you can set this to whatever else have to automatic ultimate number on. That way you can see how long before your ultimate is going to be, uh, you know, before it's going to be back up. So if I drop it there, you can see it counting back down over here uh, to the time that it's going to be out. And then the zero in the corner is going to show you how much ultimate you have built up. I like having this stuff on everywhere uh, or kind of all the time, wherever I'm at, doesn't really matter. I like being able to see everything. Some people may not want to see everything all the time. You can set some of those to automatic if you prefer. Notice those pop up when you go into combat. Uh, when it comes to combat text, I have it to own, outgoing own, outgoing damage own, outgoing damage over time own, outgoing healing own, outgoing healing over time own, crowd control own, and my pet damage I have off. Some people might like to see their pet damage. I don't really care to see it. Uh, incoming, uh, I have all this stuff set to own as well until you get down to incoming pet damage and I have those off show overheal i have that set to own as well now when it comes to buff and buffs and debuffs i have those always show that way you can see the buffs and debuffs on the target it does get kind of confusing because it's going to put a lot of stuff over your health bar sometimes if you're in a trial with big groups you'll see the stuff at the top of the screen but this is very handy to see everything that's going on uh, why i said the new ability bar timers are great before this is the only thing we really had to kind of keep up with some of our abilities because not everything had timers on it now with the timers and being able to see all the debuffs and buffs it makes doing damage a lot easier, in my opinion. Healing a lot easier, tanking a lot easier. You know when everything is going to run out. Uh, buffs I have on, self buffs on, self debuffs on, target debuffs on. From others I have set off, long effects on, and permanent effects off. If you want the permanent effects on, it's going to show things like your Munda Stone and all down in the bottom right here, kind of where my, uh, let me pop a health potion or uh, uh, some food real quick. You can see that's not a, a permanent effect. So you can see the food has three hours there. I kind of like to know when my food's going to run out, just personally for me. But if you have like, uh, let me show you just for an example real quick. If you wanted permanent effects on, you'll see some of the permanent effects pop up. It's going to show my ESO Plus. It's going to show everything that's pretty much in your character sheet here. It's going to pop up there. So I'm not really a big fan of having all this stuff on, like Minor Berserk, you know, my, my Boon, and of course, you know, or my the Thief, Monday Stone, and the ESO Plus member. That's really kind of pointless to me. Um, some other things we can look at here really quickly. I think that actually is it. Sorry. Uh, because the last thing's the account. Anyway, guys, I hope this kind of helped you out with some of these settings for console. These are the best settings in my opinion. Like I said, you might want to just tinker with some of them. Uh, you might want to try something a little bit different for yourself, but all these work very, very well for me. But the main ones you want to focus on are those combat ones. And of course, making sure that, uh, you know, your enemy damage is some bright color that you can see that way, you know, to get out of any kind of harm's way. Of course, guys, leave me a comment with your thoughts, and I'll catch you all next time. Peace.